Veterans Day was last week, and to celebrate, the comic book publishing company Top Cow decided to release Soldier Stories, an anthology book written by veterans from different branches in order to celebrate veteran voices. Fantastic concept, right? Well, when you pander to your specific audience of veterans by promoting a book saying that you want to celebrate and honor those veterans, and then subvert their expectations by hiring inexperienced writers to write lackluster stories to lecture its audience, it doesn't really work out so well. Now, I'm most likely gonna get pretty heated and potentially even angry in this video because I'm extremely passionate about this particular topic. As a Marine Corps veteran myself, I've gone to combat zones in Africa and Baghdad and hold those experiences very near and dear to my heart. Continually learning something new every time I look back on those moments and experiences. But when getting emotional about this stuff, let me be very clear in saying that I am not directly attacking these veteran writers. Their voices are important and it would be reprehensible of me to diminish or degrade their own experiences. One of the taglines for this book is, quote, because every soldier has a story. And that's true. However, some stories should be told in a comic book or on a movie screen while others should be told in therapy. So if we are truly interested in hearing all veteran voices, we'll then hear mine as well. Instead of executing a beautifully well thought out concept that really could have honored veterans and their sacrifices, we get a poorly written story that makes no sense with insufferable characters, preachy and allegorical messaging, and a constant reminder that veterans and their sacrifices mean nothing. The purpose of this video is to very clearly state that the execution of this book was entirely inappropriate and everything wrong with modern politics and modern comics and the complete inability to understand one's audience and give them what they want. Now, with that out of the way, let's get to the actual book. To start off, I'll note that this was promoted as a Veterans Day celebration book to honor and be grateful of their service. In this article by ICV2, the headline reads, Top Gal to Publish Soldier Stories in Time for Veterans Day. In another article published by Comic-Con, the Top Cow president himself is quoted with saying, the salute their bravery and thank them for their service. Support veterans and pick up this book and share their stories. So initially, you can see why I was excited about this book. I'm thinking, man, are you kidding me? This sounds awesome. A book that is going to honor veterans and their sacrifice by giving us stories of hope, brotherhood, patriotism, courage, heroism. Fuck yeah, sign me and the rest of America up. But to my sad realization, this book was anything but that. I don't know, maybe it was my own personal bias and hopefulness that we would actually get a book portraying patriotism and heroism. Or maybe it was a complete lack of awareness by Top Cow's marketing team. But after reading the solicitations and articles, I really thought that that was what we were going to get. But as other articles began to arise and Top Cow began really pushing this thing hard, I started to get worried. And after reading the book, I can successfully say that I honestly have no idea who this book is for other than the authors and publishers at Top Cow and their self filating egos. You see, this book wasn't meant to inspire hope or encourage you. It was meant to lecture and enlighten you on the injustices made by this country, supported by and seen through the eyes of military vets that all have the same fucking political affiliation and viewpoint. And as much as Top Cow would love to pat themselves on the back for hiring an all-inclusive cast of writers such as a white female, black female, Asian man, and black man, none of these individuals have diversity of thought. Speaking of writers, did I mention that none of them are actual fucking comic book writers? They're all Hollywood screenwriters, just looking for another paycheck to work their way up the corporate ladder on their way to a fucking Netflix deal. If you actually read all the bios at the end of the book, one of the writers legitimately says, I've been to all sorts of fun and wonderful destinations around the world, including Iraq and Afghanistan. I'm sorry, what in the actual fuck? 
Yeah, I wouldn't really categorize military war zones as fun and wonderful. Now, I'm not at all saying that these writers have to glorify the realities of war. War is gruesome and complicated, but there are ways to write that in a story that can still inspire people to be at their best. And on the topic of stories, here's the premise and rundown for each one. The first story, titled All Clear, is about what it's like to wait out a chemical attack with an incompetent officer and soldiers who are in it for themselves. The story ends with everyone killing each other and saying that they are all just a bunch of buddy fuckers. Feeling inspired yet? Oh, and by the way, total spoilers for the book if y'all didn't get that already. The second story asks the question, in a world full of push-button warfare, has killing gotten too easy? As a mother plays a video game that kills hundreds of innocent civilians. Oh good, how wonderful. The third story is probably the only one that I even remotely found interesting. It's about a, a squad of future space soldiers who befriend one of the local aliens so that he can be their interpreter. But once the soldiers find out that they are actually looking for some precious material that isn't at all related to or has subtext for oil, money, and drugs in the Middle East, they fuck right off and head home, leaving the alien interpreter to fend for himself in a town that is most likely going to kill him. Now to the writer's credit, the soldiers do come back against orders and fight against the warring alien tribes. The last story is just about racial injustice. It's about a man who has come back from war and is now homeless and a drunk and feels forgotten. That in and of itself is a story that almost every veteran can associate and resonate with. And I was actually drawn into what this was going to address. But then as luck would have it, the actual reason he feels forgotten is because he is a black man living in an all white population in Los Angeles in 1990 which is statistically impossible, like literally impossible. Saying things like, I'm the only brother in a sea of white faces, and of course I stand out, a black face in an ocean of white. But here's the thing, any one of these stories on their own in like a one-shot comic book or something would have been kind of meh and sh whatever. But to put this in your book for Veterans Day? I, I mean, come on, for example, when we go to the Marine Corps birthday to celebrate, we don't all just sit this in this somber area and wallow in misery at all the awful and heinous things we've done, or all the men we've lost, or all the atrocities committed. We celebrate with our brothers and sisters. War is hell, it is, but to not recognize the heroism and sacrifices made is blasphemy, and a complete lack of understanding by anyone trying to lecture veterans on something they have no fucking clue about. Oh, but don't let me forget the stunning and brave reviews that this book is getting. This is from Comic Watch. At times reading these stories brought tears to my eyes. I don't know the vets who put their heart on paper for this book, but their emotion rings just as loud as any General Quarters alarm. Ugh, why is that so cringy? General Quarters alarm? Like, what the fuck, man? Stop trying to be all cutesy. But honestly, I would expect nothing less from this comic watch whose slogan is social justice, pride, comics. Notice how like comics is like the last thing. It's like an afterthought than the actual comic book website. Social justice and pride are first, you know, comics. Eh. So here's my final thoughts. Since I've spent way too much time on this than I ever should have in the first place. If you want to actually go support veterans and their stories, go outside, talk to them have a conversation with them, give them a handshake and a thank you. Believe me, it goes a long way. Seriously, do any one of those things, but do not buy this comic book. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.